compressors affect velocity. What I got here is I got three guns unsuppressed. So my 6.5, an AR, and a uh, Ruger uh, 10.22. So I'm going to fire five rounds out here, five rounds here, four rounds of that because I can't afford it. Um, unsuppressed, and then we're going to fire them suppressed, and we're just going to see what the difference is. Okay, so I'm gonna go analyze that data and see what kind of a difference it makes and then we'll uh, get back and chat about it. Okay, so this is what the data looks like. So here's the unsuppressed ve ve velocities. So 22 long rifle, about 1400, 223. These are some of my older 223 loads, so I know they're a little bit lower velocity. Um, anyway, so about 2500 feet per second. Um, and then the 6.5 Creamore, about 27. And then if we look at the suppressed, we see a 15% reduction in the 22 long rifle, which was more than what I thought um, granted, these are sample sizes of five, so I could make it bigger, or, um, but it does give us a general idea. The 223 had a velocity reduction of about 3.5%, uh, and same with the 6.5 Creamer also had a velocity reduction of about 3.5%. Okay, guys, so even though these are small sample size, we do learn that we do have a velocity reduction of about 3 percent on most projectiles, um, 22 long rifles a, bit, a little bit more. So the reason this is important is if you're putting a, a suppressor on uh, a rifle that you're going to go hunt with and you zeroed it in without the suppressor and have all your ballistics calculated for without the suppressor, make sure you go re-zero with the suppressor and also know your updated velocities so you can calculate your respective drop. Okay guys, if you have questions or experience with suppressors and velocities, please put in the comments below. As always guys, thanks for watching.